da 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 Okay. I was originally not gonna stream tonight because, well, uh, it's still April. Okay, it's the last day of April. And I only stream three times a month, so this would be a fourth stream. But you know what? But you know what? I'm going to call this the first stream of a May. I know. Calendars are so weird. <laughs> so anyway, actually, really, the deal is I'm going to stream tonight. Uh, but because of work and, and other things, uh, I want to keep this very casual. I have a topic for this week. But I'm not going to stream a game. I'm not going to play any games. I'm just going to do my usual talking about something, and and then just end the end the stream because I actually have to uh, have to work, and my and my headphones are falling off. My gosh, it is almost time for me to get new headphones. So, um, what is the topic? Uh, hold on, I need to let me. Talk. Oh my gosh, my headphones keep. This is so crazy. Ah, it's so annoying. My headphones, they are so annoying. Let me, let me uh, see if I can do this. This broke. Oh, great. My headphone clip and my headphones falling off my ear. Oh my gosh, this is the worst day ever. Okay, let me see if I can't uh, let me do this. Are we good? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we're good. So, uh, the agenda is, uh, I'm going to do three, three live streams this month. This is number one and I'll do another one next week and another week, the week after. And then because May is a long month, um, I, I'm, I might stream, but I'm, but it's going to be really casual. I'm not going to have a topic. I'm not going to post videos. I'm not going to post any videos. I'm just going to. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be on. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll just do uh, a chat. Maybe I'll play a game. I don't know. But for the next uh, three weeks, I'll have a topic and whatever. And so, this week's topic is American cartoons. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna talk about American cartoons. Um, the difference here is I'm not going to teach you about the different styles of the of the art in, in American cartoons comparing to other countries. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to teach you about different uh, animation studios. What I thought I would do is just do like a freestyle uh, personal discussion about, uh, about American cartoons. And so I'm going to talk about what I know and what I'm familiar with, which is um, Saturday morning cartoons when I was growing up. Yeah. And that will bring us to our first topic, our first topic, which is going to be Looney Tunes. Huh? Yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Looney Tunes. Uh, so, Looney Tunes. What are Looney Tunes? Well... Looney Tunes is owned by Warner Brothers Studios. And and in the old, 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 old days, uh, uh, movie theaters didn't have many, many, many screens. We didn't have multiplexes. Most movie theaters only had one, maybe two screens. So that meant that movie times were very limited. During the day is when they showed kids' movies. They didn't show them at night or in the evening or whatever. They, they only showed them during the daytime. And what they would do before every kid's movie is they would show little short cartoons, like, you know, five, maybe 10 minutes short cartoons. And Looney Tunes was one of the first ones that they would do. So they would show a Looney Tunes cartoon, which had the adventures of Bugs Bunny, uh, and who was a rabbit who lived in the woods, who was very clever, and sometimes he would wear disguises, and he would try to trick the hunters. And he had a friend, Daffy Duck, 
who is also an animal, a duck, of course, duh. Um, uh, Bugs Bunny. Did I say Daffy Duck? I meant Bugs Bunny. So Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. So Bugs Bunny was a rabbit, Daffy Duck was a duck, and there were various hunters. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Elmer Fudd. Elmer Fudd was a hunter. Uh, Porky Pig. He was not a hunter, though. He was just a pig. But anyway, he, the, the, all of these animals would, would try to trick the hunters and, and get into trouble and make trouble. Um, there, were, there was Wile E. Coyote. And the Roadrunner, these didn't take place in the forest. They took place in, in like, the desert, in the, in the American Southwest. And the wily e. Coyote was trying to catch the Roadrunner. And Roadrunner, who's very, very smart, would, do, uh, would, would make trouble for the, for the Coyote. And the Coyote is also very smart. He would make these inventions that he would use to try to catch the Roadrunner so he could eat. Um, and, and while these were safe stories, safe adventures, you know, the the animals were never caught. Nobody died. But these were also very, very violent. <laughs> these were incredibly violent cartoons. Incredibly violent. Um, yeah, but there wasn't a story. The story was always the same thing. Somebody trying to catch the other person, but the other person was very clever, so they would make trouble. And, uh, yeah, so that was Looney Tunes. And I, I used to watch Looney Tunes with my grandfather, when I was real, 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 real little, I know to visit my grandfather, uh, and he'd have Looney Tunes on, and we'd watch Looney Tunes together. I don't know how much he really paid attention, but I paid attention, of course. Uh, this was also in the days when every house only had one TV, because I'm old. So, that's Looney Tunes. And whenever I think of Looney Tunes, I also think of Tom and Jerry. Now, Tom and Jerry, same formula. Uh, there's a cat who would chase this mouse in a house. And the mouse is very clever, so he'd make trouble for the cat. But sometimes, to kind of mix it up, the mouse would be the troublemaker, would be the bad guy. And it would be up to the cat to make trouble for the mouse. And sometimes... They would be friends, and they would be working together to make trouble for their neighbor's dog. And sometimes uh, the dog would be the hero, and Tom and Jerry would be the troublemakers. Uh, they'd be uh, causing all sorts of, of, of stuff. And so, and so anyway, the, it, there wasn't a whole lot going on in these stories. Again, very short, five minutes, maybe ten minutes never really a real story. There's always just the same sort of adventure, right? But eventually, these cartoons moved from being in front of movies during the daytime to being on TV. And so they, they would play on Saturday mornings. And that's where we had the idea for Saturday morning cartoons. And as they got more and more popular, we started to see them on weekdays in the after school time. So I watch cartoons all the time. So I watch Looney Tunes and I watch Tom and Jerry. That was very fun. But the other studio I want to talk about. So Looney Tunes, of course, was very, very old. It was, it's been around uh, uh, maybe 100 years. I don't know. Maybe Tom and Jerry, also very, very old. But there was another animation studio that only did cartoons for TV. And I'm talking about Hannah Barbera. Hannah Barbera is also a very old animation studio. And their cartoons characters are are equally as famous all over America. So for example, we have Yogi Bear. Yogi Bear and his friend. Um, and he had a friend who was a park ranger because Yogi Bear lived in the woods. And, and but he had, he lived in a national park. And his thing was he would steal sandwiches from from campers or people families visiting the parks he would come in and he'd steal their sandwiches that was his thing and then the park ranger would like yell at him hey stop stealing the sandwiches and then yogi bear would be like but they're delicious and the ranger would be like yeah that's that's true um the flintstones the flintstones uh were a family that lived in the in the prehistoric times but they had like modern day jobs <laughs> and then there was the Jetsons. The Jetsons were a future, far, far future family. But they also had modern day jobs. And it followed a family that was just like ours. 
One was in the early, early days of history, of human history, and the other was in the far future. But they were all to totally normal families, you know. Uh, but to make to make these cartoons a little more interesting, sometimes Hanna Barbera would mix the worlds together and 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 put them into uh, what was called the Laugh Olympics. And the Laugh Olympics was Saturday every Saturday morning. There would be a new adventure. With the Laugh Olympics, the Laugh Olympics, they took the Hanna Barbera characters and they put them up into teams. Oh, this was so crazy! They put them into teams that would compete against each other, and because you had the good guys, the good guys would try to win by just being good at racing, and the bad guys would try to win by cheating and making trouble for the good guys. And so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they were all basically the same. Um, but they also added a little bit of a, a, a drama, yeah, a little bit of drama uh, to the cartoons. So usually cartoons in America in this time, I'm t 50 years ago, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, just, just that I'm really old. Anyway, but a long time ago, cartoons didn't really have a story. And again, they were very short. But Laugh Olympics was the beginning of kind of like a story. They told a story, but not a very difficult story. One team is trying to win, and the other team is going to come up with a clever plan to stop the other team from winning, so they could be the winner. So where does that bring us? Well, that brings us eventually to the 80s, the 1980s. And Saturday morning, morning cartoons evolved uh, from being these very, very short stories that didn't have really a story at all. It was just the same thing happening again and again, just just in different ways, <laughs> which is which is fine. You know, when you're seven years old, this is fine. But eventually, uh, American cartoons got a little more complicated. They had a plot. A plot is a story that has a beginning and an end, and also the stories took took longer. So if a if a Hanna if a if a if Laugh Olympics if Hanna Barbera was a five minute cartoon, eventually cartoons would be thirty minutes. So if a cartoon time was thirty minutes, you would usually have four, three or four or five little cartoon stories. But now we have one cartoon story. Every Saturday morning episode was its own story. And for a kid, this was huge. Only grown-ups watched TV that had a story that was the whole half hour or the whole hour. But now the kids had cartoons that also did the same thing. So we have the Super Friends. The Super Friends were great because it was our favorite superheroes. Here we have Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. And every week they would have their own adventures with their t with their friends uh, basically a super team think of like the avengers right and they they would go on uh, every week was a different a different uh, problem for them to solve and another thing is cartoons were always supposed to be funny but the super friends sometimes weren't funny they were kind of serious not not sad serious but like dramatic and this was cool okay and and then the other was the Smurfs. The Smurfs also had a story. Something happened in Smurf Town, in the forest of the Smurfs, among the Smurf people. And there were relationships. Um, there, were, there were good and bad Smurfs who would sometimes change as people. That was for a kid. That's huge. That's, they're trying to be, they're beginning to understand people and they're watching smurfs these little blue people do the same things that they see other people do in real life this is quite quite a powerful thing to happen i want to talk a little bit about he-man okay so he-man was huge in the 80s now how can i explain he-man in the world of he-man it takes place in the 
Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, where where you had barbarians and warriors who fought with swords and bows and arrows, and you had wizards who used magic, and people lived in castles. But in the He-Man universe, there was also spaceships and laser guns. <laughs> eh, anyway, and and then the other thing is, uh, okay, in He-Man. There were superheroes, but not like Superman or Batman, but like Middle Ages barbarian superheroes. So the main the main hero of He Man is a guy named He Man, okay, <laughs> and and he is a barbarian, and and his superpower is he can change from being a one kind of barbarian to another barbarian, and the only thing that changes. Is his close? So, so in the cartoon, when he wears his everyday clothes, everyone knows him as Clark Kent. That's not his name. I just can't remember his uh, his He Man name. But but when he needs to fight the bad guys, he says these magic words, and he transforms into himself. But now he's wearing different clothes, and nobody can recognize him. They only know him as a superhero. What? Your Superman is the same guy, but he's just wearing a different shirt. But anyway, uh, but the thing that made this interesting is this was the first time I saw toys. Uh, he Man was one of the first. Cartoons that also sold toys and clothes and backpacks and lunch boxes and all sorts of merchandise stuff. And as soon as they did that, every cartoon after did the same thing. So all cartoons were just kind of a commercial. Hey, kids, buy this cool toy that's connected to the Super Friends, or buy this cool backpack that's connected to He Man, buy this cool these cool shoes that look just like your character's favorite shoes so it's all tied into merchandising that became a huge thing in the 80s and i started to get a little old for cartoons so what happens when kids get a little too old for cartoons well they stop watching cartoons and what do the uh, animation studios do well they they start developing cartoons for a specific audience. They start making cartoons for specific kinds of kids. For example, we have She-Ra, which takes the same idea as He-Man, but made it for young girls. But not like but not like little girls, but girls the same age as the boys who watch He-Man. But now the girls have something they can watch and they can understand, oh, this is this is a, a woman doing hero things. And they can relate to that. Rainbow Bright. Rainbow Bright is part of again a toy toy series for very, very little kids. But Rainbow Bright, these stories happened. These cartoons, not stories, but these cartoons happened about the same time as the other cartoons. So while kids' older brothers and sisters watch Super Friends or She-Ra, they could watch their own cartoon that was in the same time area. So little, little, little kids could watch Rainbow Bright or The Snorks with their and their big brothers and sisters might might be with them, might be watching with them, because they're waiting for their cartoon to start eventually. So it's a way for that everybody, all the, the children to watch together, which is great marketing. Now, the other cartoon, Scooby-Doo, again, it's this cartoon where every week there's a different adventure. So the stories are not, remember, the stories are not five minute long stories anymore that are very, very simple. Every story is the same, right? They, again, these stories, these cartoons have changed. So Scooby-Doo Adventures follows this, this dog. He can't talk, but he, he can kind of, he can kind of talk to his friend and his friend will translate. But anyway, the point is Scooby-Doo follows the adventure of a dog and his friends 
chasing after mysteries, unexplained mysteries, all over America in a, in a van. And every week was a different mystery. And some of them were funny, but usually they were a little scary, a little bit scary, because some of the mysteries were, were, took place in a haunted house. They involved a ghost, sometimes a monster. But at the end of every episode, we learned that the haunted house actually wasn't very haunted. It was just a regular house, and some crazy guy put some traps in there to, to make trouble for the kids. And it wasn't a real ghost. Actually, it was some dude wearing a costume trying to frighten the kids in his neighborhood. So they tried to make it real safe. Scooby-Doo. Um, so what happens to, to Jack Detroit in this time? Well, he's starting to get really old. You know, he's, he's too old to watch uh, cartoons. But there was one more cartoon that he watched towards the end. This is getting to the end of, of his cartoon time. Still in the 1980s. This is still the 80s. Mr. T. Ha <laughs> ha. The Mr. T cartoon. So this started a whole new change in American cartoons. So now cartoons last a half hour. And each cartoon is its own story. But the cartoons are not about any one person. It's always about a character. Mr. T is about a real person. So let me teach you a little about Mr. T. Mr. T is an actor, and he became famous, famous, the famous. <sighs> Mr. T is an actor, and he became famous as a professional wrestler. Yeah, he's a professional wrestler. That's how he became famous. And as a professional wrestler, as you get more and more popular, uh, they start doing movies. And they're not very good movies. They're, they're always action movies. And the professional wrestlers are either the good guys or the bad guys. But Mr. T, he did something very interesting. He was in a very, very popular boxing movie called Rocky. And the hero of the movie, Rocky, of course, uh, he's trying to show that he's the best boxer in America. But he's also trying to show he's, a, he's just a regular guy. Well, the, his enemy is another boxer, Mr. T. Yeah. And, and what's crazy is in the movie, Mr. T is Mr. T, but the actor's name is Mr. T. And Mr. T is a bad guy. He's a bad guy. He's like, no, he's not a cool guy. He's gonna and he's gonna he's gonna really hurt Rocky, and he's gonna be the winner. And he's not just gonna be the winner, but he's gonna he's gonna be the winner and and make Rocky so embarrassed that he fought. Oh yeah. Uh, and and eventually uh, he made that movie, but he didn't stop there. He didn't stop there. He took his fame in Hollywood. And he started showing up in TV series. He was an actor on a very popular TV series called The A-Team, where he was one of the good guys. And it was very important to this, to this actor that his character, he was a big, strong guy, but he was not a bad guy. He wouldn't do bad things. Like, he would hurt the bad, he would hurt the bad guys, but he would try to do it in a way that didn't get anyone else hurt. It was important to him to be safe with other people. And he also didn't drink. He didn't do drugs. He ate healthy, you know. Like, he, did, he didn't try to be cool and say, yeah, I'm going to smoke a cigarette after winning the battle. He would say, okay, I won the battle. Now I'm going to eat salad because that's healthy. And he would do, he went on to do other TV shows to, again, being the good guy and trying to show, I'm a strong guy, but you can be strong too. So he's trying to be a good role model. And for, he had his own talk show for a little while. He had a, uh, his own talk show for a very short while. It wasn't very successful. But the whole focus of the talk show was to bring people on who were very, who were role models and to try to introduce them to the world. Hey, the, this is a role model. Let me ask them some questions. Why are you a role model? What makes you a good person to, for people to be like, you know? 
And one of his TV projects was a, a Saturday morning cartoon. Nobody had done that before. Nobody. This is the first time they made a cartoon about a real person. And that's point one. Point two, that person had control of the cartoon. Usually, nobody has this kind of control. Usually, the studio decides, okay, your character is going to do this, that, and the other. And then the actor comes and just says the voices, and then they put the voice on the cartoon. No, no, no. Mr. T said, if you're going to use me, I want my character to do these things. I want my character to say these things and, and try to be good and say good things. Uh, he decided what commercials to show on the show. So if, the, if Mr. T would talk about some product, it was a product that the actor supported. Not because he was paid a lot of money, but because he said, yeah, I'm, gonna be, I'm paid a lot of money, but I also recommend these things. I, I, it's okay. I think it's okay for kids to ride this kind of bicycle because I think it's safe or whatever. Okay. Um, and so I loved Mr. T, the cartoon. But I also, I was a huge fan of Mr. T, the actor. I was his number one fan. So was I going to watch Mr. T, the cartoon, even though I was getting a little old? Uh, absolutely. And that's exactly what I did. I watched, I watched Mr. T, the cartoon. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, and it didn't last for very long. Um, and by then, by then I was in high school and, and then eventually I went to college. So, so what happens after that? What happened to American cartoons when Jack Detroit stopped watching cartoons? Well, let's talk a little bit. I'm going to end, I'm going to end my stream tonight talking about Disney. So the Disney afternoon, I didn't realize this was an afternoon. I think now that I'm thinking about it, I think this was after school and it wasn't Saturday morning, but that's okay. Yeah. I don't really have a real plan <laughs> to this stream. Uh, I just have a topic. I'm just, I'm just talking about my memories of cartoons. Um, so Disney, when I was growing up, it, it had its own TV station. And it would show Disney shows, but only on that station. And by the 80s, it had its own cable channel. So it had a TV station, a channel on TV already, and a cable channel. But, but by then, it had several like channels on, on cable. So it had Disney one, Disney two, Disney three, four, five, but it also had, you know, channel four, I think it was, or channel seven. I can't remember. But anyway, so it had both of the really powerful TV time periods. So of course they showed Disney shows. Duh. And did they have Disney? Did they show Disney cartoons? Yeah, of course they did. But they did something really, really interesting. They made a series of shows. Uh, DuckTales, um, Darkwing Duck, um, Chippendale, um, uh, Tailspin, uh, all sorts of these, uh, of these little cartoons. Again, very kind of mature shows. They involved Disney characters, but they were mature. They were, they were for little kids who could understand, oh, these are cute Disney characters. But they also had stories that older children could understand and follow and, and, and really enjoy. When they had adventures, sometimes the adventures took several episodes. If you missed an episode, you would miss part of the story that happened, which, which most cartoons in this time, they never did this. They show one time, and that's one story, but Disney... Disney adventures started to show connected stories and more and more other cartoons did the same thing. You miss one episode, you're kind of missing what happens in the plot. It's quite, quite interesting. And uh, the 
but the but the key point here is Disney had so much TV, but they still showed these Disney adventures, these Disney afternoon adventures, on regular TV, so that everyone could watch these shows. That was really interesting. Um, other brands didn't do that then, and they still don't do it. Think about think about Sony. Sony does this, has this um, strategy where if you want to, their media, you have to only go to them. You can't get their content anywhere else. If you want Sony things, you have to only go to Sony. And if you don't have access to it, then you don't get to use it. Okay? That, that doesn't seem smart to me. Disney has their own channel. But they also let some of their content be available in other places. So you didn't feel like you were left out. Like, oh, I don't, I don't get to watch these things. Well, no, that's not true. You do get to watch some of the things. And Disney Adventures was one of them. So kids got to see Disney. And, uh, and you know, of course, uh, that's great marketing. Because eventually, when they want more Disney, they have to go. They'll convince their parents, hey, Sign up for Disney Channel too, because I want more Disney. And the parents would be like, oh, "Okay, fine, I'll we'll get Disney Channel." <laughs> now, now it's Disney Plus. You can still—that's another thing. You can still watch Disney on TV. You can still watch Disney on cable. But now we have Disney Plus. That there's so many different ways you can watch Disney now. Um, and if you don't have access to to all of them, you still have access to Disney. Sony could kind of take a hint, you know. So why am I talking about Disney? Well, okay, so I have a little confession to make. Uh, I actually watched a bunch of these towards the end of my high school life and, and early in, in college. So at the end of, of high school, um, I don't know. I didn't watch cartoons anymore. I was busy chasing girls and, and reading very serious books and and. And trying to learn how to use computers and be like a real smart computer guy. But when I was bored, I would hang out with my little brothers who were just old enough to follow Disney adventures. And I'd watch it with them. So my brothers could understand Disney. They were just old enough to begin to understand. And I could understand Disney because it was right under my, my level. I could follow. I could enjoy. I could enjoy these cartoons just as much as my little brothers. Uh, the, the stuff that they watched was a little bit too young for me. Like, I, I was, I'm not into that baby stuff. But the Disney adventures, absolutely. And that's how my brothers and I connected is watching the Disney adventures. Even today, I can sing the theme songs to all the Disney adventure song, uh, uh, shows. I, I know the theme songs. I'm not going to sing. Don't worry. Oh, in college, why did I watch these shows in college? Well, my roommates and I often had a lot of free time. And we were often bored. And we couldn't go anywhere because we had classes or part-time jobs or uh, uh, club activities we had to do. So there was a lot of waiting time. And so what we would do is we'd watch these cartoons and uh, and just and, and and talk about girls and stuff while we were watching the shows, you know. So anyway, so that's it. That's the uh, that's Disney uh, afternoon uh, cartoons, and that is American cartoons. From Jack Detroit's memories, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think I think next week I'm gonna talk about more Disney. I think I'm gonna talk about Disney cartoons, but not the movies. I think I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the TV shows that they that they did, the cartoon shows on TV that they showed, um, but not the movies because that's a whole big. And, and and besides, there's better YouTube videos out there that can explain the Disney movies. I want to do a little just just a freestyle uh, chat about the different cartoons that Disney made for TV. And that is going to be the stream. Like I said, not a long stream tonight. I'm not going to play any games, but uh, but that's it. Um, yeah, because I got to go to work. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, and that'll be, and, uh, yeah.
that's it for uh, for this uh, this week's stream. Bye bye.